Have you ever wanted to be Miss Marple? I'm guessing the answer is probably no, but there is something very appealing about that small village in England, rural, busybodiness, where you're investigating all of the people around you and uncovering their dark secrets. So, Letter Better ostensibly looks like you're going to be doing something like that, but under the mandate of the state. But once you start playing, you realise that you're actually more of a tool of an oppressive regime. So I went into it thinking, oh yeah, yeah, it's going to be this mild detective story. But it ends up being something much more along the lines of Papers, Please, where you're the tool of, as I say, an authoritarian state, where you're investigating people without their knowledge, consent, or really any due process. Fantastic, eh? So that's very strange. There's this big disconnect between doing something which would be useful to your society, i.e. looking out for them, looking out for your fellow countrymen, and protecting them by uncovering spies. On the other hand, you are just rifling through people's private conversations and memories. And that's incredibly invasive. So what's the point of that then? How does that feed into the game? Well, the way that it feeds into the game is you automatically have a sense of paranoia. When you're looking at all of these memories and all of these conversations and these deeply personal thoughts, you have to think, why am I doing this? And when you start thinking like that and you start thinking, what are these people doing? That's when doubt creeps in. And then you start swinging between extremes. The extremes being, oh my god, all of these people are writing in code. Look at it. Any of this could be code. Look at these numbers, these figures, these dates. Look at these names that you've never heard or are used in an unusual or abstract way. Why are they talking about the size of marrows at a garden fate? Why are they talking about the last will and testament of some guy and his daughters in such detail? And this paranoia increases and intensifies. So to talk about the structure of the game a little bit, you have to submit to your superiors what you think are the suspicious letters. And when there's a level of paranoia going on, you want to submit them all. You want them all for review. Because any of them could be you know, a criminal or a spy or some sort of traitor. So where do you cut it off? How do you stop this inrush of paranoia and just realise that somebody's being an ordinary person and writing the way that a human being would? And therein lies the rub. So as you go along, you have to winnow things down a little bit. You have to start noticing patterns in the way that people speak and whether that's something that could be considered suspicious or whether it's fairly normal behaviour. So, is it any good? Yeah, it is. It's a good game. It's strange. It's quite uh, difficult. There's very little transparency and a lot of opacity in the way that it's presented. So it's deliberately challenging. It's only a small game. It's quiet. It has these rural pictures in the background every now and again. It's supposed to sort of lull you into a sense of uh, somnolent snoozery. It's like drifting asleep drifting into sleep on a summer's afternoon in a way. But you have to stay sharp and you have to pay attention. I resorted to making notes in the end because I couldn't keep track of all the names and who I thought was one of the guilty. So there's a, a fair amount of depth to it. You have to pay attention. It's incredibly simplistic looking as you can see, but it's got a charm of its own. If what you've seen and heard appeals, I encourage you to support the developers on it and buy it. In the meantime, please like and subscribe. Well, farewell for now.